sketches by the Guantanamo detainee Abu Zubaydah released last week have revealed the brutal reality of the CIA's torture program in graphic detail. Zubaydah, who was captured by the U.S. in 2002, remains locked inside the world's most clandestine prison, Guantanamo Bay, despite no official charges being brought against him. The sketches released by his lawyer, Professor Mark Dembo, depict his client being waterboarded tied up naked and having his head smashed against a wall, among other things. How important is this new information in helping us build a clear picture of the abuses com committed by U.S. security forces? Joining me to discuss this are Gregory K. Tanaka, an American scholar and writer, and Yen Shui, Associate Professor of Organized Crime Studies at the China Institute of Contemporary International Relations. Gentlemen, welcome to The Point. So a little bit of background. As I said, he, Mr. Uh, Zubaida, he was captured in Pakistan in 2002, where he, then he was taken to Thailand, where he was tortured. And according to the New York Times, who published these drawings first, he was subjected to various forms of torture, torture during the four years he was held in secret prison by the CIA. He was also said to be the first person to be subject to the interrogation program approved by George W. Bush's administration. He was said also to be the first person to have been waterboarded by the CIA and he endured it for 83 times. So we've actually heard many stories about this and yet this is the first time that we see sketches drawn by a victim who suffered such measures, such um, interrogation means. What does it do to you, Gregory? Um, does it make it more real to you or does it remind you of the extent to which the U.S. secret agency is able to go in order to achieve their, their goals, which is to attract Im information or to, to make this person change his radical beliefs or, um, or the timing of the release of these sketches? What do they do to you? Well, there's a deep visceral effect for me. Um, I, I just wanted to stop looking at the drawing, the sketches. Uh, about halfway into it. Um, so there's a psychological impact. Uh, I think the larger issue going on here is uh, is, a, is an attempt to dehumanize the enemy and to have that process carried out out in the field and e even in secret uh, in places where there's rendition and they're taken somewhere else. And so I think that's kind of what is playing out. There's a kind of a, uh, an appeal to fear among U.S. troops and among American citizens. And um, I would guess also uh, uh, there's a little bit of racism slipping in there. What do you mean by racism there? Well, um, when we had World War II, we had the Geneva Convention because the Europeans, the Germans fighting the U.S. and, and England were required to treat prisoners a little better and not, so, not, and not such a harsh fashion. This is not applying here at all. And so one can just look at the two situations side by side and see that there's, there's just a vast mm. difference. Mm. Um, I kind of see that, uh, at least at first blush, as, as, as a racial difference right off the bat. Okay. Uh, maybe there is the rationale as well because these people are terrorists or believed to be terrorist suspects, so they don't deserve the kind of treatment yes. that a normal prisoner of war yes. would des or a normal prisoner yes. would deserve. Um, d does that kind of rationale hold water for you? I think that's the rationale presented. It does not hold water for me. But I think that's the one that was used, and mm. it's a, somehow was was sort of foisted on the American public and also on American troops, all part of the campaign to promote fear, I believe, toward mm. this this enemy. Um, Professor Yen Shui, what is your take on seeing these uh, these pictures? As I said, we already understand, uh, actually, since a long time, that the U.S. CIA has been employing uh, deploying these measures, and of course, there have been contamination, but. Now these sketches coming out from a person who suffered a torture, such measures. What does that do to you? And what does that help um, your understanding of the situation of such programs? Yeah. Uh, Abu Zubaydah was uh, tortured due to his uh, suspected involvement in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. But uh, until now, uh, he was not charged or tried in, in the court. And uh, when I see the see the illus illustrations by Abu Zubaydah, it, it's still quite uh, shocking to me. Although sporadically there are some information released to the public, 
uh, concerned about the CIA or other intelligence scandals uh, related to the detainees. Uh, but uh, this, I think this is only a uh, tip of the iceberg. Maybe the reality is more shocking and more um, acceptable to the general public. And although uh, U.S. Uh, started the, the program uh, with the excuse of counterterrorism, but uh, I think this goes too far. And uh, I, I don't think this program is uh, effective in, in, in combating terrorism. And uh, actually, for the past uh, around 20 years, U.S. has failed its global war on terror. But there are actually people who leave, leave comments under the article who says, um, I'm sorry, when I'm not going to feel sorry for someone who plotted to hurt American people or basically anybody because these are people who are supposed to be terrorists, so they're not feeling sorry for that person. And I guess this is not the only person. There's, there's more than one person who think that way. What does that say? Actually, there are a lot of people who are who are probably feeling that way, you know, because these people are suspected terrorists, so you can do whatever to them. Yeah, I think the... What does that say about some people's mentality there? Um, I think this is not just uh, the consensus among the top officials of the military uh, and among the uh, CIA, among the U.S. intelligence uh, different agencies. They all want to... Uh, uh, use these uh, techniques to get some information about the future terror attacks again mm -hmm. against the U.S. Mm -hmm. So in this way, it, this is kind of a persuasion for the general public. The general public was hit by the 9-11 events. So, wa so they want the pr protection from the military, from the intelligence agencies. So the, I think the, the government, the White House, and the defense uh, department used this as an as a, as a excuse to implement these inhumane uh, techniques. And uh, I think this uh, U.S. never acknowledged this uh, program existed. And uh, they call this kind of uh, torture as enhanced interrogation techniques. They, they don't see it as a torture. Well, um, Gina Gaspel, the, the current head of the CIA, is known to have been an active participant in the torture regime which flourished in the wake of the 9-11 and she has also vowed that she will never restart such a program even if instructed to do so by the president. Um, uh, Gregory, can you understand that someone who has actually been, you know, at least condoning such a program is actually promoted to a very high position in the U.S. government? Uh, my interpretation of that is that there are uh, large forces at play underneath the surface in the U.S. government. Um, some of them are tied to what has been referred to before as the military industrial complex or the, the secret, you know, the CIA and other agencies like that. Um, this can easily give rise to conspiracy theories, interpretations like that. But I think uh, what's happening in this instance is uh, to the extent that this is embarrassing or shameful later, there's, there's a wish to cover it up quickly. And by promoting one of the proponents of this, there is, I believe, the attempt to help cover it up by saying, well, it wasn't that big a problem. And we were under duress at the time. Um, for example, I'll give you, uh, there are two other examples. Uh, I think it's Professor John Wu at UC Berkeley was given that post after writing the documents uh, in, in defense of, the, of torture, and I think the person who is currently the president of the University of California was also shipped over to that, that top position in academia um, as re after leaving uh, the CIA. I believe she was national defense hmm. uh, What does leader. that say? How come, uh, you know, the, the American society, a society which treasures itself, which prides itself on such things as human rights, you know, these universal values I can accept something like this. And, and the people who actually, you know, is partici active <coughs> participant part of the regime can actually, you know, uh, be promoted. I will say I think the American, it's starting to wear thin. The American public is starting to get bothered by all of these ideas and notions being foisted upon them. Um, there's, there's a growing disenchantment with the, these stories, these narratives from the government about war and terror 
And I think the public is getting, uh, getting to the point where it's not, just not going to accept it anymore. Uh, President Trump is stuck in the middle. He's between the military industrial complex and the people who don't really want war. And so he's stuck in between. Um, President Trump actually signed last year an executive order to keep Guantanamo Bay open and also boasted that he wanted it. Uh, he wanted to load it up with some bad dudes. He also said, I'm asking Congress to ensure that uh, in fight against ISIS and Al-Qaeda, we continue to have all necessary power to detain terrorists whenever we chase them down, wherever we find them. And in many cases for them, it will now be Guantanamo Bay. So is this just a bad apple? Or do you think this mentality is still rife throughout the government uh, in the United States? Mm. I will First, I want to add one point uh, to your uh, previous question. Actually, I, I don't uh, quite doubt about the Hasbro's statement on the restart things. Actually, maybe the U.S. Uh, intelligence agencies still, they are continuing its uh, torture uh, program right now. They never stopped it, I think. And uh, as you know, the, the CIA seems to have a culture of lying because the, the previous uh, CIA director, Mike Pompeo, just uh, public said in this April that when he was in CIA, they were, uh, they lied, they cheated, they, they stole. So I, I think this, the U.S. Is, is still secretly implementing the, the torture program. And uh, 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 um, about the Guantanamo Bay, and the, the U.S. Uh, White House, I think the will maybe will use it to, uh, to hold the uh, American jihadists returning from the Syria and the Iraq because the, the White House and, uh, and other European countries are, are hoping to find some places to, to keep these dangerous terrorists. Mm. Uh, such actions in uh, extenuating circumstances circumstances ever permissible, Gregory? I don't think so myself. I think it's, uh, it's abhorrent behavior uh, to resort to that. Uh, on the other hand, that was, that was the rationale offered to the American public, which kind of reluctantly, I suppose, uh, accepted it. And now we're in this position of trying to look backwards at what happened back then and what we've inherited today. Uh, I do want to point out that Guantanamo Bay received a huge injection of funding to upgrade the facilities recently. So there's, there's, they're preparing for something. And it's, uh, it may not all be terrorists. It may be related to this, this sort of impeachment slash uh, accusations of, of treason. Both sides, the Democrats and Republicans, are really going at it right now. I would venture to say it's approaching constitutional crisis in the United States. And so that may be one of the reasons why Guantanamo Bay is still being kept open. All right, we're going to leave it there. Many thanks to Gregory Tanaka, uh, an American author and writer, and uh, scholar and writer, and Yen Shui from the China Institute of Contemporary International Relations.